everyone, my name is Barry. Welcome back to Power Apps Academy. Today we're going to be learning about how to create a reference number. So you might be creating a ticketing app or you know some sort of invoicing or purchase requisition, anything like that where you might need a, uh, a number, a reference number, maybe it starts with REF and then has 0050 you know, at the end and then every time you create a new one it uh, and increments the value by one on that reference number automatically without you having to do anything or keep track of it. So lots of use cases for this and um, yeah, so after today's video, you're going to be able to implement this in your apps. It's relatively simple, so it shouldn't be a long video. So uh, hopefully stick with us to the end. And don't forget guys, you know, please subscribe to our channel over here. Uh, there's a subscription and don't forget if you want any power apps, there's loads of useful power apps to get you up and running your business without you having to spend hours and hours. You can check out those templates. They don't, don't yeah, way. there we go. There's someone down there. So do go to, head over to powerappify.com and check out if there's any templates that you can start using. Um, yeah, so let's, let's jump right into it. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen. Um, I've opened up Power Apps. Now this app uh, that you can see is just a demo app. If you want to check out the previous video, um, this one we just uh, learned how to, you know, have a have a. Let's just quickly show you how to drop down menu. If you've got a team, you might be wanting to send IT, you know, uh, set up new user or something. Uh, user, and then you would maybe want to attach a file. We learned how to attach a file over there. You can attach one, and then you could can submit that. And that would send off uh, an email to that team based on whatever your selection is. Okay, so that's the basis that we're working on. Now, we are thinking about, actually, we want a reference number. We want to have a particular reference number that we want to add on here. Um, so we can we can do that as well. I'm just going to um, just open this up here quickly. All right, so what do we need to do for this? First of all, we are going to need a SharePoint list. So I've already got one configured, but you guys can just share exactly what I've done here. So this SharePoint list is going to store um, our reference number. I'll show you how it works. Let me just bring it up quickly. So uh, create a sh new SharePoint list um, and uh, just create a, a few columns in it, right? Just a basic SharePoint list in the title column. That's where we're gonna keep track of our number. Now you can have one SharePoint list that keeps track of many uh, reference numbers in different apps, right? And this is how you do it. You create um, a row for your particular app. So in this one, I've created a row called SD underscore demo for service desk underscore demo. This number is used for a service desk form email demo. So to create a uh, reference number, it's going to start with SD and it's going to be 10020. And then every time I create a new um, email and send it off, it's going to increment this to zero uh, to, to one. Increment that number by one continuously over time. Okay, and um, and that's that's simply what I need in the back end. So your three columns in your SharePoint list: title, where you can just put any number. Just make sure there's five uh, two two um, two letters and five digits, five numerical digits in there. And then your 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 ID is just going to be. Uh, what, you know, just anything that you put in there and that's you're just going to reference in your app and then a description of what that's going to be used for. I can create many more uh, rows in there and you know, different apps can use it. Uh, we'll show you how that's done. Right, so let's head over. When, just once you've got that in place, we'll head over to Power Apps um, and then what we'll want to do is just go into your data and you'll want to connect in. So we want to go to New SharePoint List. We want to connect to SharePoint. I'm going to add, sorry, add data source, SharePoint. There we go. There it is. Connect on SharePoint. I'm going to hit on my, I know what it's in this SharePoint site. And I'm just going to, I know it's called, what is it called? The tracking number. Okay. So um, whatever you've called it, you'll select it in there and we'll connect to it. Okay, now you can see I've connected to that SharePoint list. So now I'm able to access that SharePoint list from within my app, which is exactly what I want. 
Right, now what am I going to do? Um, so we want something called ticket number, so we're going to add in just the, the basics here. We're going to put in a new text box, and we're going to call that um, ticket number, uh, number like that. And we can't see it because we've got a black background and a black text, so we're going to make that white text. There we go, ticket number. And we want to have another text label next to it over that. And let's make it yellow just so we know that's our ticket number in there. So we've got our text in there. Right, what else do we want to do? Just make it maybe look, look pretty. Just put a rectangle around it. Rectangle just to make it look nice and highlight it. But this isn't going to change. There we go. Um, we want to have that transparent and we want to make it have a border and we want to make the border look white like that and we want to move it to the back so we right click on it click on reorder send to back cool all right so we've got a nice little white outline we'll shift things around a little bit to make it look nice and pretty there we go Okay, cool. All right, so we've got a number, we've got a text box, so we've got some labels in there. Everything's in place, but obviously it's not very meaningful. Okay, so maybe we just want to add in a button. So we can go into button here, and we want, when we click on the button, we want to say maybe set a new uh, ticket. So we want to create, create new request, like that. Let's just set it. So all the fonts are the same, si <coughs> same size, so let's do it with these as well. I like to go for 11, obviously you can do whatever you like. There we go. Okay, so we've got create new request. Okay, so what are we going to want to do here? So um, what I've done is I've put all these uh, drop down and, and text boxes in a container. So that means that everything is nicely contained in this container. And I can, you know, why I put it in a container, it's very easy to set properties in the container. So I can make that all of those um, drop down lists and text box disappear quite easily um, and when I set the visibility on that. So um, what am I going to do? I'm going to set the container. We're going to uh, set a variable on here. So we a visibility variable. We want to... Um, select that on maybe we'll set it var container visible okay we'll just set that var container visible and we'll put a new variable you can see it's disappeared it's because I haven't yet defined that variable yet so that variable is either going to be true or false and that that basically sets the visibility of that container to true or false so um, I'm going to go back to this button now. Um, so it's got no code on the on select. So when I click on the button, this is the code that it sets. So we're going to um, we want something that um, sets uh, the container visibility uh, to true on click. Yeah. This is just so when I've got two forward slashes and put it, I'm just putting an explainer of what this. Uh, snippet of code does and it's always good to do that because sometimes you'll write some code and then you'll come back to it at a later date and you go what the heck was I trying to do there and it doesn't make sense so you know, just put this it doesn't take long but it always helps out in the long run so good practice yeah so we're going to use the update context uh, which is uh, basically there's two two main ways of creating variables one is setting a global variable and then there's updating context so context is just like in it within a screen you can set you can change um, the value of variable using this update context. Um, so that suits us. Um, look it up if you need trouble or we can do another video. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it in, within this video. It's pretty uh, easy to use once you read um, the documentation and understand the syntax or the how it's structured. So we're going to go back to that variable that we created. Uh, I'll just container visible. I think that's what it was, and we're going to set it to true. Close the bra curly brackets and close the brackets. 
So uh, when this is clicked, we're going to set the value of var container visible to true. And then, um, yeah, so that's what it's going to do. Or we just test it out, see if that works. There we go. Okay. So you can see uh, when I've clicked that, it set that variable to true. And now you can see the uh, container and everything that's in it. So that's perfect. That's what we want. Okay. And we also want to... Uh, we also want to set that um, set a variable that has our reference number in it. Okay, so um, let's just put an explainer here. So um, set the next ne next re reference uh, number uh, in the tracking uh, number SharePoint site. Cool. Right now, um, so you don't have to worry too much about the code. This is one of those things that um, you can just copy and paste. All right. So um, we'll try and explain it as as we go through it. But don't worry if it doesn't make too much sense. You can just copy and paste what we've done here, and um, yeah, as you use it more and more, you'll become more familiar with how it works. But we'll try and explain it to you uh, as we go along. So the first thing, now this is the other way of setting a variable, right? We, we're going to go uh, set um, uh, var reference number. So we want to set, uh, that's our variable name, var reference number. And we want to set it to first, which is a function. That's basically the first time it finds um, uh, a variable. Uh, sorry, finds a row that matches something within our SharePoint list, okay? First, and then we're going to use filter. And then we want to reference our SharePoint list, which is tracking number. Remember we added it just now over here. There we go. It's called tracking number. Cool. So we've got that. So um, we can just click on that. Tracking number, and we want the tracking ID go back to here see the track ID we want to go where the track ID is equal to SD demo okay so that's what we're looking for so track ID you can see it's already found that in there it exists and then where it equals to SD underscore demo close that off um, close the brackets close the brackets again and we want the title of that, okay? The title of that SharePoint list. Okay, so we're setting this variable based on where it finds a row with SD demo, and we want the title, okay? So it's finding this, it's gone, oh, okay, there's a, there's a row here with SD demo, that's the one we want, and we want to return this over here, this title value, okay? So that's what it's done, and it's set this title value as this variable number in here okay and then we just want to close it with the brackets at the end just to make sure that we have all the brackets in here so open 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 close 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 so just make sure you always open and close and then we're going to close that line off <coughs> with a semicolon there okay so that one's done right now we want to use the update if update if statement so this is going to update if the, something is, is true there. Okay, so we're going to go, we want the tracking number SharePoint list. Okay, so update if the tracking number SharePoint list, where track ID, track ID yeah, is equal to, that's right, that S, because we want the, the line that we specify in there, SD underscore demo. Okay, so track update this collection on this condition where this, this SD track ID is equal to SD demo, and we want to update this with the following. Okay, we want um, title. So we want to update our title value. Okay, so again, update this row if it's equal to SD demo, then do whatever we're doing to this value over here. 
and we're using title and we want to concatenate which is a function okay brings together so this is where it gets a little bit confusing okay so we want concatenate SD which is the, the values before the numbers okay because we want to basically split these out we want to say okay keep SD separate we want to update this number by one and then bring them back together okay so then we want to uh, do text and we've got text there and we want to move from the right hand side sorry right and we want our var reference number hopefully this is going to work yeah five from the right okay this is working out how many numbers there are and then we want to add one to that number okay and we want to close off the brackets close off the squiggly brackets and then close off the final bracket there okay so it's taken the numbers from the right there's five you can see there's five numbers one two three four five yeah, it's added one to these numbers and then it's joining back on the SD at the end. Okay, so it looks quite complicated, but you know, when you go through it you, and you see how it works, it's not, not too difficult. But the best thing of all, it's in this video, you can just copy and paste it. And um, yeah, and that's how it works. So do we actually think it's going to work? Which is a different story. Um, so what we need to do Right, we've set, don't forget we've set this var ref number over here, right? So we want to copy that. And we want to change this text box here from text to that variable, okay? That var reference number. Right, let's see what happens now. We're going to push play and we're going to click on here. Hey, oh my gosh, look at that. That is amazing. And it's on 23 here. Let's go back. Refresh this. Oh, that's awesome. So the next one will be 24, right? There we go. So you can see that that number is written back to SharePoint. So it doesn't matter who opens the app at whatever point, it's always going to use the next one and it's not going to um, get stuck and use the same number twice. So that's. Um, that's really handy. I use this a lot and hopefully you guys uh, can use it as well. And um, yeah, so let, let us know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to smash up the likes. Don't forget to check out um, powerappify.com for your templates. And um, we will be back with a new video uh, sometime soon. So stay tuned. Don't forget to hit up the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll speak to you soon.